We've talked a lot about CUCM clustering options, and I can feel it's coming to the end now, but I want to hit a topic that I've, I've mentioned here and there, but it never really hit directly, and that is this idea of redundancy in our clusters. In all but the smallest environments, Cisco suggests having two or more servers. Now, for the smallest environment, they've created a product, not even shown here, uh, called CUCM uh, Business Edition. You might throw that into Google. Uh, that is a single server solution, very similar to what Microsoft did with their small business server, where they put together a whole bunch of high dollar products on the server. And they said, this is great price, but you can only have one server. It doesn't support redundancy. That's what Cisco did with Call Manager Business Edition. They said, okay, it's going to include Call Manager. It's going to include Unity, which is the voicemail. It's going to have some advanced mobility options. Three separate servers normally, but combined into one box. That's what they call Call Manager Business Edition. It's an amazing product for the price if you can stomach a single server solution. Once you get beyond that, though, into the real networks, that's that's where you have to have uh, the redundancy in place. Now, you can see in the small slash mid-sized world, meaning up to, say, a thousand phones or so, you don't really have much difference between these two options, so let's quickly talk about it. One-to-one -one redundancy, one-to-two redundancy are these two uh, phases. Notice that we have a primary server and a backup server. Now, when I'm talking about primary and backup, it's very easy to confuse that with publisher and subscriber. Two different worlds. I want you to take a piece of paper right now. Do it. Grab a piece of paper. On one side, write primary backup. And on the other side, write publisher subscriber. Two different worlds. This is all database. This is all runtime. Remember I said the two things that define a cluster in one of the previous nuggets was the runtime data, like how phones are registering and all that. And then the other piece is the database. This is the database. This is the runtime side. So what we did is we said, OK, there's going to be one server that's the primary. And normally, we'll make that the subscriber. Why? Because our publisher is more valuable, so I want that to be sitting there as the dedicated backup. This is that one-to-one -one redundancy. So up to a thousand phones, we'll say, and I'm just going off of you know a server that can support a thousand phones. All thousand phones are sitting on that subscriber. It's doing the work. It's it's the workhorse of the network. The publisher, our sacred servers, just sitting there waiting for the subscriber to die. It's not really supporting phones. It just is kind of maintaining the database, but it's looped in there. Now, notice what happens once we get to the large slash enterprise size business. Look at the publisher. It's pulled out of the call processing world. The pink, this little shading that I have here, represents servers that are uh, supporting phones. These are all subscribers in this case. You can see subscribers, 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 subscriber. All of these different subscribers are inside of here. Publisher is there, but it's not part of the call processing circle. Why? Because it's so valuable. We don't want it to have to handle the load of processing calls. It's just handling the load of processing the one read-write copy of the database. The subscribers are standing here, and so we've got you know one subscriber that's the primary for one phones one to one thousand, and one subscriber that's sitting there as a backup. This server right here is is the primary for phones 1001 through 2000 this is a, a, a network supporting 2000 phones this server is sitting there as a backup for those phones that's a one to one model now look over here notice what we've done is we've got the publisher dedicated again uh, but now we've got primary primary uh, for phones 1 through 1,000 and 1,001 to 2,000, and one backup. Again, these are all subscribers, right, in the database size. This guy is sitting there as the backup for 1 to 2,000 phones. Now, what are we making a bet here? We're betting that we do not lose two servers at the same time. If you design your network right, that's normally a safe bet. I mean, obviously, they're not plugged into the same UPS power supply you know, all, all those kind of uh, silly design mistakes that could happen. You shouldn't lose two servers at the same time, so it might be very cost effective. Now, uh, keep in mind, what happens if both of these go down is this server, which maybe is spec to only support a thousand phones and you know, based on the server size, you can get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, it's going to start just getting bogged down, maybe to the point of crashing because it takes a lot to support these phones. I would say, uh, you know, one uh, one symptom that you get is this delayed dial tone effect, you, you, where people pick up the handset and this guy is so bogged down they don't hear any dial tone. Well, what do people do when they don't hear any dial tone? Do they just hang up the phone and go, "Oh, it's not working"? No, they sit there on their phone and go tap 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 on the on the little dip switch. You know what I mean? That on the phone they're like, "Hello, hello," tap 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 tap. And what they're doing is on these phones, it's like a denial of service attack. They're like, "Die, server!" You know, it's like they're 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 just nailing your backup server, which is already overloaded. So you can imagine that if you overload a server, it's only a short amount of time before re people really start nailing that server because everybody's going to be uh, hitting their phone. They're not patient. We don't live 
in a patient world. So uh, cluster sizing. Clusters can contain up to 20 call manager servers. However, only eight of them can process calls. So the 20, I mean, you can start separating functions like the TFTP server can be a dedicated server. Uh, and we, we'll, we'll talk about more about these functions when we get into the install. But like, for instance, you could have a dedicated music on hold server or conference server, but only eight of them can be the database, meaning one, you know, one publisher and seven subscribers. And those are the ones that do the workhorse functions of processing the calls. Now, the database changes are all on the publisher. Now you remember that publisher is the only read write copy of the database, right? All of the subscribers are read only copies. So this means this is a single point of backup because there's no sense in backing up the subscribers. They're all just replicas, read only uh, databases. Uh, but that is uh, with the exception of user facing features, UFF, I've abbreviated it. Cisco made a change. It used to be that everything if the publisher was down everything would be frozen no configuration changes at all people couldn't forward their phones you couldn't add new phones you can't i mean anything that would require a write to the database would fail however user facing features were separated by cisco to where the subscribers can actually write that data to their database and replicate it back to the publisher once he's back online. So that allows the user facing features uh, that the users would notice, like people would notice quickly if they can't forward their phone. Or the do not disturb button just stops working on people's phone or the voicemail light doesn't turn on or off anymore. I mean, those those kind of things, uh, Cisco wisely said, let's, let's separate out and keep those uh, working. The core configuration data, like you won't be able to add new phones, any changes to the phone system, uh, that's not user facing is locked until that publisher comes back online. That's why Cisco suggests to separate that once you exceed 1,000 phones. Now, could you go beyond this? Could it, could I you know say okay, I want to use a one to three redundancy because I still am feeling pretty good about not losing two servers at the same time, even if we have you know a third server going here for phones 2001 uh, to 3,000. That's a primary server there, um, and still using that backup for uh, 3,000. Uh, yes, you could. It would work. Uh, however, now you're into to, you're, you're beyond Cisco's design guide. Cisco does not create or recommend a design going beyond one to two redundancy. We all know Cisco knows best, right? So try to stick to those design guides. So that that kind of fills in some of those gaps in the cluster design on on setting it up for redundancy, setting it up for growth, showing how big you can grow a cluster. Now, uh, ooh, 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 that's that's a big thought. What what happens when you hit eight servers? Are you like, oh, well, we've maxed out Cisco, we can't grow anymore? No, no, you just create another cluster right I mean when we talked about the design scenarios of having uh, a distributed design where I have multiple clusters uh, over over the when that I'm communicating with you can create you know numerous clusters and each one of these clusters you can support 30,000 IP phones so I mean you can grow as big as you want it's just saying one database one database has these limitations okay well I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing